ShareSite's taxable income report allows you to manage and track your Attribution Managed Investment Trusts or AMIT components accurately for each financial year. Our taxable income report is designed to provide you with assistance with your tax reporting to the ATO. Investors are always advised to consult their accountant and or confirm the accuracy of their investment data before using this information for tax purposes. So there are two ways you can enter these components into the taxable income report. The first one is that we actually receive this information from the ETF or managed fund provider. And we receive this around August or September, depending on when they release this information. Now what we'll do is we'll populate all the components based on the information released and also what's entered to your investments in ShareSite as well. All you need to do then is just reference with the end of year statement to make sure everything's correct. Depending on how things are around it, it might be a one or two cent difference, so you can just change that as per your report. If you have your report earlier and you want to do it manually, then you're more than welcome to do so. And we're going to follow through how to do that and navigate the different end of year statements in this video. So to access the taxable income report, we're going to click the reports tab in ShareSite. We're going to go to our tax and compliance section and then hit the taxable income report. From here, we will set our dates to the financial year that we're reporting for, either through the calendar or the most recent financial year will show up top of the page. Clicking that will load up all the payments in that time frame. You can see that we have non-trust income and then our trust income where these components lie. So the two examples we're going to go through today is a beta shares example and a Vanguard example. And we're going to run through the statements and enter the components. Firstly, we can see for our beta shares example that there's a payment that has fallen outside of our date range. And if we just hover over that I, there's a little text here that shows us why that's showing in there and why you need to report it in that financial year. Now to open up our income form, we want to click the annual tax statements components button underneath all the payments. And that'll bring up this form here. What we're going to do now is just go through a digital copy of a form that we have for the same holding and we're just going to populate the fields here. So we're going to open up our form here for A200 and we're going to go to the very top. So the first thing we need is our 13U and that's 2168. We then need 13C, 123.81. Notice how this error has come up and this is going to get fixed as we go through the form. The only reason this is showing is because the example that we have and what I've actually entered in ShareSite, they're two different amounts. No need to worry here, it'll fix itself up once I enter the components. 13Q is next, 37.08. And then we also need 13R, which is going to be $0 here. Now the next few components you can see here for our 18A and our 18H, these are grayed out. 18A is a sum of our discounted and capital gains, and 18H is a sum of our net capital gain and our AMIT, CGT, gross up amount. Now going into our beta shares example, we can see that there is a capital gain summary here. Discounted method capital gains is showing as $1.78 and that's a gross amount. Now it can be misleading because we don't actually want to enter this amount. We want to scroll to our part C, depending on which form you have, the components of attribution. Going to our capital gains, we can see that there's about eight lines of discounted gains and we want the attribution amount on the right hand side. This is showing to be 89 cents, so we will enter that in, 0.89. Then for all other capital gains, we can see that that is a zero. So our 18A, just to make sure everything is correct that we've just entered, should be 89 cents. Going back to the summary, 18A, 89 cents. Perfect, we've got that right. We don't need our gross up amount, again, which is 89 cents. which means our 18H would be $1.78, which it is. Now, if we had have not done that and we just looked at the part B here and we entered our discount gains as 1.78, 
you would see that both those amounts would be different and we'd be very confused there. So we want to scroll through and we want to get the actual breakdown, the attribution amount. So that is 0.89. Lovely. So now we go back to our summary. We need 20E, $1.84. 20M, 184, and 20O, which is 10 cents, 0 0.1. And then we have an Amit decrease or increase. So that's our cost base there. So we will scroll, scrolling through our beta shares form. Here we go. We have a cost base net increase amount and a cost base net decrease amount. Increase by zero and decrease by $2.75. So in our decrease amount, that's $2.75. Increase is zero. Now our tax deferred for Amets, this should be less left blank as according to our disclaimer. Same goes for non-accessible. And lastly, for interest. Now, you can see that the components that we've entered in here have adjusted for each payment. And the reason we do this, especially for cost base, is that if you were to sell between any of these payments, your cost base would have adjusted correctly to then track in your capital gains. If you had done the adjustment at the end of the financial year and then sold through here, you'd be basing the CGT based off the cost base prior to that. We just think it's a more accurate way to track these things. These components won't actually change your dividend received amount or the tax taken out. It's just gonna change the components on each payment there. Once we're done, we just hit save and confirm payout. And that'll confirm and save all the payouts in that time frame. So that was beta shares. We're gonna to go to our Vanguard example now. I'm going to click the component for Vanguard and then go back to our digital seat sheet. And we're going to work through the same form again. So first up is 13U for 12014. Our 13C, Q and R are showing as zero. And now we're going to go to our capital gains. So discounted capital gains, these lines here, we want to go to the attribution amount. And there's two amounts here. So we're just going to use a calculator to figure that amount out. So 16.15 plus 38.48 gives us 54.63. 54.63. Capital gains. So we're looking at the attribution amount. That is zero. We can actually see an amount in the cash distribution here. How do you know which one to look at? Well, because we're using the attribution amount, we can then check our 18A, it should be 54.63, which it is, capital gains at zero. So we don't need to enter that amount. Our gross up amount, 54.63 again, which would mean our 18H is 109.26, which is correct. We're following along grades here. 20E, 0.42. Twenty M zero point four two twenty O zero point zero six. Lovely. Now we're going to go to our increase or decrease in terms of cost base. Our excess and shortfall amount. So our excess is zero, and our shortfall, our increase cost base is sixteen point nine seven. Sixteen point nine seven. Like our other form, Amets, this should be left blank, Amets, this should be left blank, and Amets, this should be left blank. It has now adjusted all the components per that payment. All we need to do now is save and confirm the payout changes. Once I've done this for all trusts that I might hold in my share site portfolio, I can then use this report either through the bottom of the report or by exporting to Google Sheets, PDF or Excel to assist myself with my tax return. 
So that's running the uh, ETF or managed funds tax components through our capital, uh, through our taxable income report rather. For more tips and tricks and educational tools, make sure you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay tuned for more.